What is the creepiest thing you found in a forest? Like and subscribe or I'll haunt you tonight. I was walking through some woods, I don't live near woods, it's just somewhere far from my house, and I felt a little off. And some strange things were happening, such as birds suddenly flying away, bugs suddenly going silent, etc. I decided to turn back as it was pitch black, and I pretty much knew where the exit was. But I was worried that I'd ventured too far into the overgrowth, the trails were not very well worn, and it felt far from civilization. Eventually, I started hearing some leaves crunching, I thought it was just plants under my foot, but it was not in sync with my walking, but it was kind of trying to stay in sync as if to trick me. I called out, but no one responded. Feeling creeped out, I got a little jog on, eventually finding a path that lead out of the forest. But I felt like something was right behind me, and I was checking over my shoulder quite a lot. I have always been a little uncomfortable about walking alone, but at this moment felt straight up paranoid. It was then that I saw it, on one of my routine back, checks my I caught something. It was was something quite wide and short, with a metallic body, and a circular hole or window or differently colored spot in the middle, too dark to really tell. It pursued me slowly and I bolted it out of there. It seemed to be trying to communicate in some strange garbled noise, but I wasn't going to stick around and find out. So I got home, locked all the doors and didn't sleep much that night. Not going back there in the dark anytime soon, that's for sure. My fire department was called out for a search for a missing person. He was supposed to report back to prison on a work release on Wednesday. We were dispatched on Saturday, after he was reported as a no-show, when someone found his car on a back road. We assumed he had parked there then called someone to pick him up. Okay, a couple hours wandering the woods, then we don't find anything and go home. 35 minutes in, we find him. He's maybe 50 yards off the gas pipeline easement, just standing there, facing away. You'd think he was taking a leak, until you see the rope. He had hanged himself in the worst way, the tree he'd attached the rope to wasn't strong enough, so he didn't break his neck. His feet were on the ground, he strangled himself, it probably took a while. He stood there, dead, for three days. We held his body as our captain climbed the tree and cut the rope. We wrapped him in a tarp and carried him nearly a mile through the woods, back to his car. We sat there for two hours while the forensics team surveyed the site and the car. I was a volunteer firefighter for 17 years. That guy is the one that still appears in my dreams, 14 years later, as I walk up the gas line trail. I see him standing there. In college, a group of friends and myself decided to hike a section of the yet starting in the Smokies and going north into Virginia for 15 days in early summer. Our second or third night in the Smokies, we were all exhausted but in good spirits. The whiskey was flowing and the joints were passed around. I called it a night fairly early and my tent mate did so as well. About two to three hours after falling asleep, I'm suddenly woken up from a very deep sleep by my buddy who's shaking my shoulder, and frantically whispering for me to get up. When I finally got up and got my bearings, I asked him what was wrong, and he whispered at me to shut up and listen. About 30 seconds later, I hear a noise that still sends chills down my spine 10 years later. I can best describe it as sounding like a loud vibration in the distance, almost like a loud drum being banged on rhythmically with some type of indecipherable chant following it. It seemed like the drum-like noise and chanting were done in perfect unison, like whoever or whatever the hell was doing it, had practiced religiously. It would come and go in like two to three minute intervals. Most unnerving, at each interval, I swear to God it got louder and closer. Towards the end of our experience hearing this, it sounded like it was only 30 to 40 feet away. We stayed up and listened for basically the rest of the night, both of us too afraid to leave the tent or do any investigating. It eventually completely stopped and everything returned to normal around 4.30 am. We realized we had literally been frozen in place for around 5 to 6 hours, totally transfixed and somewhat mesmerized by the chanting and overall experience. The following morning at daylight me and my buddy woke everyone else up and told them we needed to get the hell out of that area and keep moving. The really bizarre part was the four other guys that were with us claimed to not hear a peep all night, and they each had a great night's sleep. They, of course, didn't believe us, and assumed the whiskey and potent pot, 
combined with overactive imaginations was the culprit. I still keep in touch with my buddy on a fairly regular basis, not so much the other guys, and to this day, almost 10 years later, one of us inevitably brings that night up, and we discuss the possibilities of what we heard. It was most definitely supernatural in nature, and it scared me to my absolute core. We live in rural East Texas in what is considered to be the Bigfoot capital of Texas. My family has lived on our property for over a hundred years now. In the late fall of 2020, we began having what most would consider odd activity on our property. Now to preface, our property is mostly woods and swamp and butts up against more properties that are even less visited that are also forest and swamp. Some of the neighboring properties only have people visit for a few days each year in deer season and are otherwise vacant of humans all year. And some of the waterways get into pretty dark and isolated stretches of river bottoms. In the evenings around sunset and into the earlier hours of the night, we began to hear on occasion odd bird-like whistling noises coming from the woods across the road in the forest and swamp area. Our homes are on the other side of the road from the undeveloped property, and these weird noises would come from in the wood line near and after nightfall sometimes. It sounded like birds whistling and chirping. Except it didn't sound exactly like birds. It sounded like something doing a really good job of mimicking birds whistling and chirping. This went on for months, but sadly, I never got any audio recordings of anything. My father, an experienced hunter and woodsman said he kept trying to locate the source of the noises, but when he would get closer to the woods, the sounds would move away from him, further into the woods. He said it would continue to do so almost as if whatever was making the noises was trying to lure him into the woods. Having seen too many movies he opted out of that situation and went into the house. This all climaxed in January 2021 when I went out to our vehicle to get something from out of the back of the vehicle, and suddenly from not far into the wood line, I heard the most chilling noise I have ever heard in my life. As I was retrieving my bag, a loud animal-type roar erupted from the wood line near the gate that accesses our property, which is located just opposite the road as my driveway. I have spent my entire life studying and working with animals, namely exotics. And the best I can compare the sound to was a large male silverback gorilla roaring. I want you to understand that this sound was sound primal and alarming that I actually mildly pissed myself reflexively. I searched for days on YouTube and the closest sound I found was a video of a male gorilla at a zoo suddenly roaring to intimidate some onlookers. And it gets weirder from here still. Not being one to simply assume my family is being haunted by some monster, I decided to grab my headlamp, sidearm, an AK-47 rifle and head down into the woods to see what was making these sounds. I wish I could say that I saw a huge Sasquatch and had some epic shootout, but I didn't. I sat in my vehicle in the woods in total darkness for some time. I even played the Sierra sounds over my vehicle's speakers to see if anything would show up, but sadly and perhaps thankfully nothing did. However, before leaving the woods, I headed back up to our cabin to make sure everything was normal around the cabin. We have actually had people break in before, so I wanted to make sure everything was as it should be. I searched the immediate area with my headlamp and rifle and while there was some large animal that stayed just out of my line of sight due to thick undergrowth. I am mostly certain it was a feral pig, which can get very large and dangerous. The oddest pet of all this is that when I checked the slough, a semi-permanent body of standing water. Near our cabin, there was an animal in the tree I still cannot identify. This small animal was about two feet tall sitting on its haunches and about a foot wide. It had no obvious or visible tail and appeared to clearly have four appendages. It was invisibly some sort of mammal, but since the water was higher than normal due to a wet winter, I couldn't get a better angle or get close to it without wading out into icy water. This animal had silver-colored fur with texture rather similar looking to that of a chinchilla. And for all my attempts, it would never show its face or paws as it kept all those distinguishing features tucked into its body like it was sleeping despite it clearly reacting to the sounds I made on the ground. I have tried for everything I can think to identify this creature. It was not a opossum, it was not a raccoon, it was not an owl or young owl with downy feathers. I cannot place this animal with any local species of fauna even if it had some health issue like mange. The closest thing I have been able to find is a silvery gibbon, which are obviously not native to eastern Texas. My wife still half jokes that I found a baby Sasquatch tucked away in a tree by its parent, and I honestly don't know what to think about all of this. But after that night, 
We haven't had any more strange activity that I am aware of. I am a very open-minded yet rational person. I have grown up in these woods, I have studied and kept numerous animal species, I have helped with government ecological projects in our area. I have taught biology and ecology classes. But this will baffle me for the rest of my life. Did I find a baby Sasquatch? Most of my family for the longest time was centrally located in Florida, going back generations. That's changed as people have gotten older, passed on, and of course needed to move out due to the job market in the state stagnating. But back then, I was sort of the black sheep of the family for being one of the very first to get out. I still tried to make trips down there to see them though. When time and money allowed for it since I was still an early 20-something trying to keep my head above water, financially. Anyway, for this particular trip, I decided to introduce my then boyfriend now husband to everyone, and on top of for once having company on an extended road trip. It was also time for us to try out our shiny, newfangled GPS to get us to where we were going, since it had been long enough since my last journey that I didn't really trust my memory to lead me through Florida's roads. At least, not until I was in my home city proper. Turned out to be an almost entertainingly terrible trip. We were hit by fog and rain at the state border, to the point where visibility was nearly zero. And for one of the few times that I'd seen in years in that state, we got hit by hail in big enough pieces that it eventually broke one of my car's wipers. After debating whether we wanted a chance stopping to try to find a place to pick up a replacement and essentially having to navigate this terrible weather with an increasingly shaky GPS device. We were at the least inhabited stretch of the main road, and the instruction set that device drew from definitely reflected it. In the middle of the night, we decide to keep on trucking, and I made do with what visibility I could. Besides, I figured being able to read the road signs wouldn't matter so much, since we had our computerized roadmap giving us instructions. Well, that's what I thought. Except at some point that calm, mechanical voice instructed us to take an unexpected turn off the main road, and after a little bit of back and forth with my SO, we half-jokingly decide to go with the flow and take it. Figuring we could easily make a U-turn if it was completely off the mark. For all we knew, it was operating with information about some kind of road obstruction or accident that we couldn't see yet, because the weather was still absolute crap. So we drive along for a good amount of distance, and pretty much within the first couple miles every other bit of traffic has dropped off. Then a few minutes and another turn later, the road makes an abrupt transition from concrete to gravel, and I shrug my shoulders and chalk it up to at least a somewhat entertaining dog leg in our trip, even if I still couldn't see any of the landscape in this soupy weather. I tell my SO to just keep his eyes peeled for a good place to turn around, since our two-lane road has turned into an unpaved, one-lane path with a ditch running up each side, surrounded by increasingly heavy trees. One bit of silvery lining though, is that the horrible spew falling from the sky at this point finally pauses, giving us a bit of relief and making me not so afraid of getting our car stuck in mud while making my eventual turn around. That also means we get an unobstructed view as the woods break on one side of us, revealing what looks like an old farmhouse sticking out like a sore thumb. And who boy, we both fell absolutely silent when we saw this thing. It looked very abandoned, which is itself not unexpected. Florida back country as I was familiar with tended to be flat as a pancake, with fields and sporadic wooded sections. And every once in a while you'd get some abandoned building, usually from someone who owned more land than they could maintain or just couldn't afford anymore. This fit the bill with its empty, broken windows and peeling whitewash boards. Although it had a surprisingly well-maintained clear space around it, with evenly cut grass in a stretch about as big as a decent-sized yard. And festooned around the clear space, sometimes sitting up on pieces of raggedy furniture or set up in little dioramas on the saggy porch of the building are dolls. Literally hundreds of varyingly shaped dolls. Sometimes marionette types, with worn down joints, or stuffed cabbage patch style. One human sized mannequin, set on a rocking chair so that it stared at you not five feet from the road. Which was especially disorienting because the fog hadn't cleared fully, so you just saw this head and shoulders emerging from the mush before you could see it wasn't actually a person. And I'm not ashamed to say I veered over as sharply as I could on that narrow path, because it fooled me for a handful of seconds. We're both rubbernecking like crazy as we pass this thing, because the more you look, the more you see all the attention to detail someone went into to set everything up. Some of the dolls are sitting at tiny, doll-sized tables, 
having tea with one another with cracked and dirty glasses. Some of them have clothes, but no hair. Some have hair, but are slumped on the ground like they've been forgotten, while others are very purposefully placed. I can't even imagine how much effort had been sunk into that little, abandoned house, but only on its dull residence. We passed that place by without a single word said, waited until it had finally veered out of our sight, and then I turned us around regardless of how narrow the path still was. We had come to the silent consensus that our little side trip was now done. When we went by that place again, I was going about as quickly as I judged our janky lemon of a car could go, but I'm sure Hubs got another good eyeful the second time around. Nowadays, we still occasionally reference the dollhouse when talking about trips to Florida, and then one of us will air guitar or riff from the dueling banjos of deliverance. But it's definitely one of those things you only find entertaining from several states away, and not with a dead-eyed mannequin staring seemingly directly at your car as you drive past. My childhood home was across the street from school. Elementary, middle and high school buildings were all within walking distance of each other and was in a forested area. So for all of middle school and high school, I walked to school. This was in rural Michigan with old forest as a green belt, land belonged to the schools, I wasn't trespassing, between the school and my house. There was an unofficial trail that was basically a wildlife trail that was tucked back there that I took. It was so beautiful and peaceful. Unfortunately whether it was because I was a girl or because I wore a lot of black, it really drew some attention from some shitty kids. Kids would shout things to me as I crossed the grass to go into the woods. Things about burning and hanging witches. That I better watch out because nobody would find me out there. Once when I came out of the woods at the road, some male high school students driving home chucked a glass bottle at my head that missed by inches. The worst thing that came out of that though, had the bee on two separate occasions finding knives stuck at eye level in trees along the path. One was a knife for skinning with a super ornate handle and the other was a basic fold out. I kept them both cause f them. Somebody watched a middle school aged girl walking home through the woods and took the initiative to plant knives where I would find them walking alone. Middle of nowhere in Alaska, me and my stepdad find an abandoned car. It was creepy cause it looked perfectly clean, literally perfect dealership clean, and there were no roads or trails for miles. We were on four wheelers hunting, there were no tire tracks, the interior was spotless clean, and the keys in the ignition. How this car even got there in the forest who knows, no way it drove there on its own, who knows how it didn't get scratched up, or why a spotless new looking car was abandoned in the middle of nowhere. It didn't have plates. We go back about 7 miles until we get cellular service, call up a trooper friend. A few hours later, they arrive, we go back to the car. It's not there anymore, there are marks where the car sat in the snow, but no tire trails going anywhere. It hasn't snowed since yesterday so no way new snowfall covered any tire trails. We search around for another few hours before giving up, trooper friend keeps asking my stepdad if we are just messing with him. In Maine in springtime. I was staying on a remote farm in a converted barn. Of course, it was at night. I was going out to my van through a tall grass field to get my smokes, about 100 yards. Didn't bring my headlamp because the moon was out. On the way back, there was a tree stump in the trail that I didn't notice before. I stopped, mystified, trying to catch its outline. It stood up on two legs, I nearly wet my pants. It was about three to four feet tall and hobbled over to me like it had a limp. I ran into the barn and yelled at my friend to come out, but she was pale as a ghost. She said never talk about it again with her. A little backstory. Earlier that day we had been exploring in the woods nearby and came upon a weird stone circle in the woods. Wasn't much, but the rocks were partially buried and overgrown with weeds like they had been there for a long time. Another weird note is that this thing, whatever it was, walked exactly like the lady who owned the land. She had polio as a child and walked with a limp. It was freaking weird, no idea what it was, don't wanna know. Walking with a friend as we like to explore hiking trails and stuff and came across a small grassy field in the middle of the woods. Nothing too special about it, but the area was surreal as it felt very out of place. We thought maybe it was an area cut down by loggers or something but just appeared too natural to be that. We sat down and just took the area in, sun shining with shade from the trees surrounding the area. 
Felt like something from a Zelda game in the Lost Woods vibe. Anyways weeks later, we were going to shoot a video for a school project and thought let's shoot it back at that spot. We explored the whole area again to find nothing but woods. Never found that random field again tried years later to no avail. Not a big believer in like supernatural stuff, but that one still makes my head scratch to this day. For setting, I live in North Ireland. We don't have bears, wolves or big cats here, not including private collections or zoos. We do have frequent rumors of big cat sightings and farm animals being mauled by them, but nothing has ever been caught. My dad, myself and a family friend were antler hunting on a private property with free roaming fallow deer, we had the landowner's permission, and we had been searching the woods for around two or three hours with very little success. Anyway, in the middle of an open field, we found a deer carcass that had been ripped to pieces. The fur was scattered in a similar fashion to how a cat would pluck its prey, so we got nervous. Later we wandered into a dense forest and I found two freshly severed rabbit feet. This can be easily chalked up to the raptors, buzzards or birds of prey. But then, we found a freshly severed deer leg. It was around that exact time that we also noticed the forest had fallen deathly silent. We did not wait to see what was lurking, we bailed and never went back. 